In the previous lecture we looked at the intrinsic model of stochastic control and uh, there we, we showed that uh, one can model a stochastic control problem without actually bringing in the concept of a state of a system. And uh, I as uh, I mentioned that uh, the this sort of model is very amenable to, uh, to describing information structures. So, in this in this model if you recall we had what is called the environmental noise this comprised of all the sources of noise whose, whose distributions we cannot affect. So, this includes the initial state the measurement noise system noise uh, and so on. Uh, the information that we get at any time that we have at any time is written as a, a function of the actions that are being chosen in the past and uh, the uh, and the environmental noise. So, this function is uh, determines all the information that we have at uh, that agent i has at a, at a time t. Then the agent i's action u i t is chosen as a function of this information. Uh, notice that uh, we, uh, we can uh, there are two different ways of modeling one is to think of this as an observation equation in which case the information has to be carefully described by writing out what is the what exactly what part of the observations are actually available as information at any given point of time or you can think you can club together all those uh, observations and write them out as one one information equation ok. So, and so, it can also be considered as I said the information equation. The cost of the problem is is also written without any state any reference to a state. So, it is a function of only the actions that the agents take and the environmental noise that is present in the problem and uh, the actions have to be chosen as a function of the information. So, the action u i t which is the action of agent i at time t is a function of y i t. So, the problem then is to find these functions gamma 1 to gamma n each gamma i is itself comprised of t functions gamma i t uh, running where t runs from 1 to t which is the time horizon of the problem. In order to minimize this cost j of gamma 1 to gamma n where j of gamma 1 to gamma n is the expected cost here. So, this was our uh, the intrinsic form of our stochastic control problem. Now, what I mentioned to you also was that these collection of these functions here describes the information structure of the problem. So, the information structure is essentially a definite is this collection of functions. So, we can now talk of uh, uh, what it means for what various types of functions function classes or fun uh, types of functions lead to various types of information structures. The So, the simplest of these is what is called is static information structure. So, a static information structure and that leads to a this particular problem uh, the, the problem that emerges from there is often called a static team. Now, one, uh, one uses the word team to describe this problem because there are really n agents with a common goal. Now, uh, a team formally is comprised of exactly this it comprises of n agents with a common goal, but with possibly different information. So, they have to uh, take a, uh, a joint decide a joint set of uh, set of actions or joint policies in order to minimize the total cost, but then uh, they each have different pieces of information while uh, in, uh, on which their policies are based and uh, their actions have to therefore, be chosen as a function of their you know local local piece of information or local data or whatever. The, uh, so, so, these, this, so, the intrinsic model that I mentioned about of stochastic control is also often called a team model. It's 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 used as uh, the term often that is often used is that of that this is a a, a description of a team problem. Right. So what the the problem that I will now describe is all, is commonly known by in that sort of parlance. It is what is called a static team. So a static team is involves essentially this. So y i t in a static team the information structure is as follows. So, y i t which is the information of layer i at time t is a function eta i t of psi alone. So, the information that the agent i has at time t is a function of only the environmental variables. So, the so what this means is at, at, at every time t 
every agent only gets some information about the noise in the system. He does not know anything about the actions of the other agents. So, what this also means is that the actions of other agents cannot possibly affect the information of any other, any other agent right. So, so information of any agent is a function of only the noise or environmental noise remember of this in the system. It is not affected by the actions of other agents. So, what this so how do how do we sort of visualize this kind of a system this kind of a setting uh, the way to visualize this is to think that basically there is there are various sources of noise uh, in uh, that affect affect a system there is measurement noise there is system noise there is there is probably the an environmental noise which is itself uh, distributed and uh, known only partially to different agents uh, different agents. And what a, what this function eta i t is capturing is what piece of that uh, that long environmental noise vector is actually known to agent i. So, for example, psi could be uh, a vector which describes the weather conditions across in different locations on the earth. So, it is a meteor some kind of meteorological information uh, that uh, uh, it's uh, that is that is encoded in psi. A, uh, so it is it's therefore a long vector which which has at which has uh, components describing the velocity of uh, wind velocity maybe the humidity temperature uh, air pressure etc at at each location and what is known at to agent i is only is 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 only his own location is 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 what is known only at his location so it then the function eta i t would then be essentially picking out the relevant components of that long uh, long vector and 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 producing that as the information of agent i at time t right so this uh, this sort of model actually can be used say for example if you want to model if is a uh, a a collection of distributed wind generators suppose there are wind generators at located at at different locations so here is suppose one uh, one wind generator. Here is another wind generator at another location, and these wind generators have uh, have to produce their outputs. Let's call these u u uh, i t and u j t, the out, outputs of these two wind generators, and they are produced as a function of the weather conditions at their respective locations. The weather conditions are this the information that is available to these agents. So they have to produce their outputs as a function of this, uh, as a function of this. And now uh, there could be a global goal, such as for example, they have to track a demand signal, for instance. So the uh, they want to together make sure that they are not too far from uh, from the prospective demand at that time the demand itself could be time varying so they want to minimize the the uh, how far is their total generation from uh, from the demand so they they want to minimize something like this so then in this case the 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 environmental variable psi would comprise of of the uh, as i mentioned the meteorological conditions meteorological conditions at at all locations locations at all times
so these are the meteorological conditions at all locations and at all times. And also in addition to this it also comprises of this uh, the, the, the stochastic or uncertain demand that we want to follow. So demand at all times. All of this can be clubbed together into the vector psi and the but only relevant only specific components of that psi are known to individual generators. So, the so when u i t is being chosen only as a function of the weather conditions at location at the location of generator i at time t right. So, this this is one sort of description. Uh, one kind of uh, motivation or application for this particular setting, but this is the the uh, this is also uh, the reason this is this is studied is not not only because this is uh, most applicable, but but because this uh, this this sort of setting has uh, has in it an underlying simplicity, because because there is really no effect of uh, of of the actions of an earlier of, of another agent on the information of the of of, uh, of any other agent. So, they, there is no scope for agents to signal through actions or for there to be a dual effect or any of that right. So, thanks to this what happens is the the actions of uh, uh, the actions that any agent is choosing can be can be more can be understood more more uh, more succinctly or more easily and the only effect at play then is the issue of decentralization so the fact that multiple agents have different information is is the issue at hand rather than their how they affect each other's information so thanks to this this becomes an extremely useful first problem to study right so the, where the information uh, is only a function of the environmental random variable. So, when one uh, in addition to this one can also make the following reduction here. Notice that since y i t is a function of, uh, uh, of, of of psi, we instead of thinking of this problem as having n agents acting at uh, n separate agents uh, n separate agents acting at time t at t different times. So, that means n agents acting at t times instead of this one can think of one can think instead uh, equivalently of n times t agents not, not n agents acting at t times, but rather n times t separate agents. See remember all of these agents are part of a team. So, as I had mentioned in one of my earlier lectures that one can either think of agents acting at different times as the same agent acting across uh, at different time instants or one can think of it as if there is there are actually different agents but acting with different pieces of information. So, one can equivalently have n times t different se agents sep separate agents n times t separate agents So, as a result of this because because and this is happening because there are actually the the actions of the agents is not affecting the information of uh, other agents we we can really freely def uh, redefine uh, what the uh, what various agents uh, uh, what really we mean by an agent in the system. Okay. So, thanks to this now what we uh, we we find is that time is actually irrelevant the time is irrelevant So, time in, in this problem becomes irrelevant. So, effect that in that is the reason why this problem is called a static team problem. So, one can effectively just get rid of the index of time here and think of uh, the problem in the following way that there is an agent i who receives information y, y i which is a function psi i uh, sorry eta i of psi. This, this here is, is our description of, uh, of the information in a static team problem. So, that the, the time axis has been removed. One can one then has the, the cost 
the cost remember is a function of u1 to un and also psi and each of these are chosen as a function of their respective information. So, this here is gamma 1 of gamma 1 of y1 all the way till gamma n of y n comma psi right and uh, we, uh, so so therefore the problem then is to minimize j of gamma 1 to gamma n in which which is simply the expectation of l of gamma gamma 1 of y 1 till gamma n of y n of psi. So, we want to minimize this over gamma 1 to gamma n. So, this is the description of a static team problem. So, and as I as I mentioned earlier, so uh, static team uh, in a static team problem there is no dual effect there is no dual effect in a static team problem. So, the policy of any uh, uh, policy of any agent does not affect the information of, uh, of any other agent. So, the information of, uh, of an agent is a function of only the noise in the system. So, it cannot be affected by the actions or the policies of any other agent right. Now, this kind of requirement where the, the information is a function of only the noise this seems like a rather str uh, strong requirement because it seems to suggest that uh, you know the, there is really no way agents can influence each other and uh, therefore, this problem might actually be, uh, be reduced to something trivial. So, the uh, there are two th the remarks I want to make about this. First is that it is not true that this problem is trivial, it, it actually needs some work this problem as well and we will see an example to see with to get clarity on what how the, the form of this problem is and, the, and, and how does one actually go about solving such problems. So, that is that is point one, it is not at all true that this problem is trivial. Second is actually although there are uh, although it is true here that uh, the, the uh, that, that we have sort of not allowed the influence of other agents to come up in this uh, in this description there are actually a good number of pro problems uh, with uh, in the is in especially in the linear quadratic domain whose where the information where uh, where we have uh, actually classical information structures but those problems can, because of the linearity of the dynamics and so on can also can eventually be reduced to problems that that, that have a static information structure. So, th the structure of those problems is such that you can in fact by uh, 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 once the information structure is classical you can actually do a bit of elimination and manipulation and eventually write out information purely as a function of the noise in the system. Now, you might recall that we had done something similar when we were trying to compute uh, when we were trying to compute the um, optimal policy of a linear quadratic problem uh, and uh, 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 linear quadratic problem with uh, imperfect state information that uh, there we, we there if you remember we wrote out the innovation uh, uh, we wrote out that the error in the state estimate uh, is in fact a function of only the noise in the system. And then the argument was that one could back substitute the state equation and eventually get it to be a function of just the initial state and all the noise in the system. This this kind of argument is precisely what is needed in order to reduce the uh, the a, a problem with classical information structure and linear dynamics to a problem with static information structure. So the second lesson then is apart, uh, the first lesson is that the uh, the static information structure problems are not not necessarily easy. And second is the, the static information structure problems uh, actually generalize a, a lot of uh, pro, uh, pro, uh, lot of problems where uh, with where which we have already studied which is of the where the dynamics are linear. So, a problem where uh, uh, so, so this is this uh, motivates why we should be looking at static information problems with static information structure more closely. If it does not have static information structure is it is said to have a dynamic information structure. 
So, what is the negation of, uh, of the information structure being static? It is uh, so in a static information structure the actions of any agent cannot affect the information of any other agent. Uh, then, then in a, in a dynamic information structure, it just means that there are there is at least one pair of agents, such that the action of one agent affects the other, the information of the other agent. So, inf an information structure is not static. Is, is called dynamic. And uh, the stochastic control problems with dynamic information structure are, uh, are called is, uh, are called dynamic team problems. So, the resulting problems are called dynamic team problems. Now, the uh, if even though we have uh, uh, that that dynamic, we, we if you look at dynamic team problems, doesn't mean that the problem is necessarily hard. Of course, all your uh, all the stochastic control problems uh, with uh, with uh, with classical information structure that we have studied, they are also uh, in general dynamic team problems. Of course, some of them, as I said, can be reduced to static team problems, but not all of them. Uh, so, th they are in general dynamic team problems. So, dynamic team problems may or may not be easy. So, so the, the, the of course, when they have classical information structure and they are in a when the cost is in a, in uh, in the form that we have looked at where there is a stage wise separation and so on. In that sort of form, the, those problems tend to be easy. So, this is something to keep in mind. So, for the rest of this course, we really would not have much time to go into the various intricacies of dynamic and dynamic information structures, because uh, the, the number of information structures in those problems in those problems is extremely vast. Uh, and uh, it will take an entirely separate course to, uh, to, to understand exactly what the, uh, you know what sort of information structures play out in various problems there. So, what we will do now is in the in the rest of this course is uh, 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 is look at static team problems more deeply and I'll do one example of a static team problems with a static team problem, but with various static information structures. So, that we understand exactly what the nature of this uh, nature of these sort of problems is. One final historical remark I should make about static team problems is that static team problems were actually first studied by Marshak and Radner, Shark. I believe this is the correct spelling Marshak and Radner. They were concerned about the, um, uh, this was in the 1950s I believe and they were concerned about the theory of organizations. So, there for them the n agents were actually n uh, individuals. Uh, who are who are together forming an organization and uh, uh, the cost function of the organization was maybe the organization's profit or something like that but then because they were these were n different individuals they each had different different pieces of information about uh, the uh, about the underlying state of the world so they may have different projections of where uh, how a certain event would play out they may have certain projection different projections about say what the what a competitor is doing or what the uh, what a certain you know maybe there is a strike in the factory and how this stri strike might issue uh, might play out or something like that. So, they may each they, they effectively are n different individuals or n different age uh, uh, what we call agents and they each view the world differently, but they all have a common goal. And th moreover, they are in a static situation, meaning that they their actions do not affect the act information of other agents. They just have to together choose a pair of uh, a or a tuple of actions so as to minimize uh, minimize the cost for the problem. So that is that is uh, their uh, their study of a static team. So what we what we see as I think uh, as a result of this is that stochastic control problems are not really the uh, are not limited to uh, the control systems problems in the standard sense. So, they are not necessarily about industrial control systems with physical systems and 
uh, and so on. They, they can they are also just as equally applicable to, uh, to situations where we uh, to social situations, to organizational situations, to, uh, to situations of communication and so on. So, any of these any of these settings whenever they uh, which involves either multiple agents or decentralization or some kind of distributed uh, observations they are essentially stochastic control problems. So, uh, one must not uh, make the mistake of thinking of stochastic control in a very narrow way. So, th this is also the reason why at the start of the course I, uh, I promise that this, this course is not really a conventional course in control or conventional course in stochastic control. It is really a course in which, which, in which I try to view, build a view where, so that stochastic control, economics, communication, uh, theory of teams, theory of organization, all of these can be thought of in one kind of common framework. The, 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 uh, the dynamic, inf uh, the, the information structures framework that we have developed in the, in the previous lecture and this one is in fact one such framework. It, it actually allows us to think of various types of uh, settings including organizational, organizational behavior uh, ranging from organizational behavior till to you know communication, stochastic control, etc all of these in in one sort of uh, one sort of light and learn from the insights that we have developed in across these various uh, various disciplines so this is this is uh, this i think is uh, is the uh, is the main takeaway from this course so as we go further we will see more of uh, more manifestations of this first we will be doing static teams uh, and deep, uh, doing a uh, deep dive in static teams and understanding the role of information uh, information in static teams and then from there we will go again to uh, to a specific type of dynamic team which is the one that comes up in communication so this uh, this is the, uh, the schedule for the rest of the course